Thank you so much for joining us, Kaiser University Multidisciplinary Center, as we present today's webinar, Helping Students Set Goals the Smart Way, presented by Dr. Rosa. Well, thank you very much for that, Dr. Miller. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Ma Manny Rosa. I call myself the most electrifying administrator at Kaiser University. Uh, I teach in the Master's of Education program and the PhD of Education program. Uh, I'm also chair of our assessment committee and we'll, we'll be talking today about goals. Um, I am also uh, honored to have one of our students, one of our uh, ex excellent students in the doctoral program with me. Uh, so I will uh, read some information about her. Uh, so it's my privilege to present Laura LaRose she is an exceptional student education instructor at Yulee Middle School in Nassau County, Florida, and is passionate about serving her community. Laura graduated from Kaiser University with a master's in educational leadership and is currently pursuing a doctorate of philosophy in education. Laura achieved leadership distinction while attaining her master's and is working towards the same distinction while pursuing her doctorate. She currently serves as the Graduate School Student Government Association president and takes pride in leading other graduate students to exercise their voice to improve the graduate student experience. When Laura married her husband 14 years ago, she became, became a proud military spouse, dedicating her talents to improving the lives of other military families. As the ombudsman at Station Port Carno Canaveral, Laura acted as liaison between other spouses and the command and assisted families with navigating military life. While living in Louisiana, Laura served as the president for the Grand Isle Spouses Club and was nominated by a fellow spouse for the 2018 Military Spouse of the Year. Over the course of her military travels, Laura has served in children's and youth ministries among six different churches. While living in Georgia, Laura served as the director of children's ministry. Laura has over 12 years experience in the finance industry where she worked as a branch manager, business development officer, and insurance agent. So as you can see, Laura is extremely qualified to help us set goals because in order to achieve all that, she must have been setting some goals which she will talk about as we are doing our presentation. So today's presentation is helping students set goals the SMART way. And SMART is an acronym uh, that we will review soon. And if anyone's uh, living in the state of Florida, you're probably getting an Amber Alert. Okay, so we have some objectives that we are going to uh, discuss from today's presentation. Understand the components of goal setting, explore decision-making strategies for middle and high school students, and also learn how to create SMART goals. The bulk of our presentation is talking about the philosophy of SMART goals. And, and as with many of the workshops, if you attended any of my workshops before, uh, I like them to be very introspective. So we're gonna provide some tools for you to think about your own goal setting and the own, your own strategy for goal setting. And by empowering you to look at inside yourself, what are your strengths, what are your areas of opportunity, uh, then that will also give you the confidence and the, the self-knowledge to help your students with goal setting. So this will come uh, full circle for you, the students, and then anyone else uh, in your life, your your any children or relatives uh, that are that are looking to to create some goals, especially for this summer. Uh, right before the webinar started, I talked about um, how I've been influenced by goals goals um, since I was a child. I've always had some goal I was trying to reach, uh, and been motivated by goals. Uh, some a recent example is if any of you have an Apple Watch. Uh, and you try and close your rings every day, what that means is that you stood for 12 hours each day, you uh, exercised for 30 minutes and you burned a certain amount of calories, whatever you set your calorie goal to. And I am now on, I believe, 912 days that I have done all three. And then I also joked how, even though I've been achieving those goals for 912 days, I still gained the COVID-15 and then some. So. Uh, got to work on that as well. But as we are looking at goals, it's important that we are all on the same page about what we mean by goals. Uh, so I, I perused several different websites, articles about the definition of goals. Uh, most of them were similar. Uh, some of them uh, 
goals and objectives. They, they use the word interchangeably uh, and focus more on objectives. Uh, but so for the, for the terms of this workshop, we're gonna talk about goal setting and according to mindtools.com, uh, a process that starts with careful consideration of what you want to achieve and ends with a lot of hard work to actually do it. In between, there are some very well-defined steps that transcend the specifics of each goal. So you are going to have uh, long-term goals, short-term goals, and then to accomplish these goals, you're gonna have strategies along the way. Uh, and it's those strategies uh, that you may modify uh, throughout the time you're wanting to achieve the goal. So a long-term goal, um, Florida Department of Education, of course, is a great website uh, and great resource for helping our students. Uh, they define a long-term goal as something you want to achieve in the future. And then the short-term goal is something you might do right away. And of course, right away and future are subjective terms. Uh, so what's right away for you and future for you may not be for for others, but you want to think right away, maybe something in the next six months, six weeks, uh, six weeks to two, three months, and then maybe long term, uh, you know, four months to a year or even beyond. Obviously, things like retirement uh, for some of us may be years, maybe even decades away, uh, but it's still something we work on if we're doing it wisely. And there is a financial literacy workshops you can attend and watch on demand. Uh, but th those are things that you can uh, have that long term goal, but start every day of your life be working towards it. So I, a couple of research uh, stood out for me as I was uh, researching for this presentation. Uh, so research in education has found goals to be essential for increasing student achievement and motivation. And this is, this is going to depend on the student. Uh, some students are, are extremely, like myself, are extremely motivated by goals. Um, but there's also a point where if you make the goals too competitive or too out of reach and the person, the human being is very competitive, then they may not even compete if they don't think they can reach the goal. So you have to know the person who you're setting the goals for and know what student is. If they're very competitive and they don't think they're gonna meet the goal, then they may not participate altogether. So know the person uh, and know to, you know to what extent, to what level of detail do you have to create these goals or help the person create the goals. Uh, comprehensive meta-analysis have found the effective use of goals to be one of the most powerful instructional interv interventions known for improving student academic success. So whether you're getting students ready for uh, transition into the workplace, to high school, to middle school, uh, to, to, to college, uh, you know, getting them in that mind frame is, is going to help uh, you be in, effective as an instructor and the students, uh, and then being, in, being an influence on the students. And then quotes, I like quotes. Um, so this quote stood out to me as I was doing my research. Goals will not be motivating if learners do not believe they are achievable. In fact, if students perceive goals as too difficult, they may reduce effort and commitment to avoid risk of failure. So that's what I was uh, talking about earlier, uh, to know the student, and then you will be able to measure you know, the, the power of, of goal setting. So sometimes you, you may use the word goal, use the word objective, use, and students may be looking at you and really not comprehending or, or understanding what that means. So here are just a few uh, tips to maybe uh, assist them in, in get, getting that understanding and getting them in the mindset of goals. One way, and this is very apropos if you're watching this now, uh, is compared to sports. So uh, currently we, uh, we have the Olympics that are in a couple of weeks. Um, I believe July 23rd is the opening ceremonies, but there's also now there's the Olympic trials. So those are uh, the Americans who are vying to get spots on the Olympic team. So if your students are into sports, uh, that is something you can use uh, to help students think about goals 
whether their the goal is to be on the Olympic team, the goal is to swim or to compete in a certain number of minutes and seconds if they want to, uh, if the person is trying to achieve the world record, the Olympic record, uh, the US record, uh, so many things, gold, bronze, silver, uh, telling students, you know, go for the gold, but if they have silver and bronze or just to be in the Olympics, you know, there's so many lessons we can learn from this. Uh, but comparing to sports, uh, something to do uh, that could be successful. Uh, visualizing the future. So just having students uh, close their eyes or write it down and telling them, hey, what do you want to do for the future? And again, the future can be subjective. Uh, with students, you may want to pick something, you know, within the next two or three weeks um, and have them think about, okay, so that's what you want to do. Uh, so what are you going to do to get there? And then when you put them in that frame of mind, that can help them to define goals. Uh, what you wish to do. So having students wish, and that could be long term, uh, pie in the sky, you know, what, what is it they want to do? And that can help them put them in the mindset, because as, as they tell you what their wish is, uh, telling them the steps that they need to take or asking them what steps they need to take or and what they're going to do eventually at the end, uh, puts them in that goal mindset. Uh, anticipating any results to guide reaction. So obviously you're, you're gonna say things and do things and it's gonna, it's going to uh, give them some type of, of, of result uh, that you're gonna have, whether it's gonna be short term or long term. And when you when they when they give you that wish and they express how happy they are because they achieved that goal, then reminding them of that feeling of achieving their wish or their future uh, could help them motivate them to continue and to do goal setting. Uh, planning out steps to goal attainment. So if, if you have them think about a goal and then, or think about a goal that they've already achieved in the past, uh, it could be as simple as passing on to the next grade. So if you're meeting with a student and they're excited about uh, going, moving on to the next grade and talk about uh, hey, how, how, how did you get to this point where you passed? And they will probably tell you stuff about studying and homework and working with the teacher. So we're going back and saying, hey, well, you see how you did all that to achieve the goal of getting to the next grade? Well, this will be some of the same strategy that you apply to get to the next grade. And then you also want to review the school district, classroom statements, and relate their goals to the bigger picture. So them knowing that as a teacher and as a, as a school, uh, the culture is about pass, uh, passing and getting students to that next level, uh, transitioning to the workforce, whatever, whatever those goals are or mission for your district or organization, uh, you want to remind them of that as well. And of course, I always tell you, anytime you can model the behavior. So if you talk about your own personal goals, it could be as simple as, hey, uh, if you know, I have their watch, I'm on day 912 because I did this, I did that, I did the other thing. So they see you in the goal setting mindset, uh, that will help them want to be in that goal setting mindset as well. Benefits of goal setting student involvement in school activities and transition planning. So by setting these goals, uh, you may be able to increase student involvement and, and if, if focusing on transition, uh, make them be successful in transition or help them or provide the tools necessary. Uh, it also does a lot for their self-esteem and their motivation. Uh, it, setting a goal and then accomplishing it, whether big or small, uh, makes them think, hey, you know, I was capable of doing this and, and I'm in control of the situation. And again, reminding them of the goals they just completed uh, would help with that because they may not realize that. Uh, increased motivation to achieve new goals. So hopefully this achieving a goals gives them a, a positive experience and makes them extremely excited about achieving that. So you remind them about that excitement uh, will hopefully make them achieve and set more goals. Propel, propel students forward. Uh, goal setting can get students through a day, through a week, through a year. Sometimes they're long-term goals. You need to break it down into short-term goals so that students can see the progress. Uh, so it'll help them to move forward. 
uh, can keep them focused. Uh, when students are, I know uh, a math teacher who when students get, get out of line, he continues to tell them, uh, remember we're here to focus on math and we are here to uh, excel on this week's assignment. Uh, so reminding them of the goals keeps them focused. Uh, transforms big problems into small obstacles. As you know, your students, uh, you know, they're, they're, the way they perceive and the way they, they look at, at the issues that are in front of them, especially with this generation, um, they may see these as insurmountable obstacles or problems. So if you can take those perceptions of, of, of what they're looking at and make them into smaller, more achievable obstacles uh, that can help them. And then for whether you're a parent, uh, whether you're a teacher, uh, this can just hold students accountable. So letting students um, know that they set a goal or that you set a goal for them and or you set a goal for yourself. And then if they didn't achieve the goal, then reminding them of this can, can help hold them accountable. But as you're holding them accountable, you also want to make sure you give them hope. So if they had this goal and maybe they achieved maybe 5% or 10%, um, you may want to acknowledge that depending on the personality of the student. Uh, so that way they at least see that they're, they held something and they don't just totally give up. So if goal setting was that easy, and this was such a great strategy, then more people would be doing it and it would probably be a much more successful world. But as you can probably tell with your personal, when you're doing New Year's resolutions in your personal life, and we're now you know, a couple of months, almost halfway through the year, uh, you can determine if those resolutions work. So we all have the intentions of setting good goals and whether they be health, personal, professional, but there are just some barriers that get in the way to these goals. So some of these barriers are uh, difficult to plan ahead. And you may see this in your own lesson planning um, or in your own working with students uh, because you, you're, you, um, your, your students are performing in different levels. Um, it may be challenging to, to plan ahead. Uh, there may be too many goals. I'm sure there's been people in my life who told me I have too many goals. Um, so that could be uh, an issue. Uh, lack of accountability or support. So that's where, if these are for your students, that's where you come in and, and, and provide that accountability and support. If it's your own personal goals, then you maybe uh, can think of a time when you just didn't feel supported uh, or you just didn't, you didn't verbalize the goal. So therefore there was not much to be held accountable for. Uh, if the goal is too generic, and that's why we're gonna focus on SMART goals, uh, and we're gonna focus on that acronym so that you don't write generic goals, but if they are generic, uh, it may be difficult. Uh, resistance to change. All of us have change going on in our lives, especially during these challenging times and how we embrace change is going to determine uh, much of our outlook and, and attitude toward life. So if, if your natural tendency, we all have natural tendencies uh, that we lean towards. So if your natural tendency is to not be uh, resistant, to be resistant to change, then that may be a barrier to goal setting. So you need to recognize, you need to recognize that, okay, anytime there's a change thing, this is how I react. There's a great book called Who Moved My Cheese, uh, which talks about the different styles when it comes to change. So I would definitely recommend, it's a short read, uh, would recommend that. Uh, only focus on the end result. So if if you're focused on retirement and retirement is is a certain number of time period away, 20, 30, 40 years, um, you know, when you have to do something for the day, it may not be um, motivational for you uh, because it's so far out. So thinking about that, uh, self-monitor behavior. So if you if you are self-monitoring behavior, two things can happen. You can either ignore it or you can acknowledge it and you can acknowledge and applaud yourself, but perhaps maybe something you didn't accomplish the way you should have. And then distraction. There are a million other things we could be focusing on in the world, uh, Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, uh, other than sitting, uh, focusing on a goal. So eliminating the distraction is a lot easier said than done, especially when we're trying to tell our students who have very limited capacity to pay attention. 
uh, distraction is a big deal. So trying to get those points across to your students and providing examples of when they are distracted and not achieving their goal uh, could be one way to help them overcome those barriers. So we talked about SMART goals. Um, so here is the actual acronym for SMART. Um, so try and, and, and remember this, maybe take a, you are gonna get the PowerPoint slide uh, deck, but if you wanna take a picture of it, just to be uh, a reminder. Uh, so specific, the S, measurable is the M, achievable is the A, R could be, R could be relevant or realistic. And then you have the T, which can be time bound or time specific. And you'll see many versions of the SMART goals out there. Uh, we based this presentation off of some information we got from the uh, US Department of Health and Human Services, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, also on the Florida Department of Education. And we also looked at resources in CPOMS. So uh, the state of Florida does recognize this SMART strategy. So I'm going to go over it for the next couple of sides. Uh, what does SMART mean? So S stands for specific. And you want your goal to be narrow enough to plan effectively. So you want to be able to, with your goal, answer the question, who, what, when, where, and why. So this, the more specific you can be with your goal, the more be able to pinpoint your progress because you know these five questions. So that's uh, step one uh, is the S is specific. M stands for measurable. And I, if, if I had to say which one was the one where maybe most human beings um, fell off on their goals, I think I would say it would be measurable. So measurable is what metrics are you going to use to determine if you meet the goal? So this makes a goal more tangible because it provides a way to measure progress. If it's a project that's going to take a few months to complete, then set some milestones by considering specific tasks to accomplish. Define how you're going to prove that you are making progress towards your goals. So most of us probably have some type of uh, goal associated maybe with weight or working out. So if there's a certain percentage of pounds you want to or body fat or increase muscle mass, uh, but you want to plug in the number so that way it is clearly easy for you to identify what your progress is towards the goal. I say the same thing. I'm in charge of the assessment committee at my school, uh, at the graduate school. So I always encouraging them to, to work with numbers because, uh, and we're also going through a strategic plan. Uh, so that way it's easy to determine if one way is if by looking at the number, whether you hit the benchmark or not. Achievable. This can be uh, subjective. What's achievable to you may not be achievable to someone else. Uh, this focuses on how important a goal is to you and what you can do to make it attainable. Uh, it may require developing new skills and changing attitudes. The goal is meant to inspire motivation, not discouragement. So think about how you will accomplish this goal and if you have the tools, skills needed. And if you don't currently possess those schools, consider what it would take to attain them. So I have this goal to, um, to learn Italian. I have one book uh, with casual phrases, which I think is probably in my car, which I never look at. Uh, and I haven't taken other steps as well to uh, sign up for a class. I haven't done any of that. So you wanna make sure that you, when, you're, when you're having these goals that they're achievable and you have the tools uh, necessary uh, to achieve the goal. And is it reasonable to achieve your goal within a certain time frame? So I am hoping to go to Europe in a couple of weeks. Uh, can I learn Italian in a couple of weeks? Um, probably not. Uh, I, maybe if I if I had the time to do forty hours a day, uh, forty hours a week, maybe, but no. So you want to make sure that when you say it's achievable, what is a certain time frame? 
relevant. Relevance refers focusing on something that makes sense with the broader business goals. So for example, if the goal is to launch a new product, it should be something that's in alignment with the overall business objective. Goals should align with values and long-term objectives. So we saw a lot of during the pandemic, we saw a lot of relevant, what was relevant in the past became irrelevant uh, because of the safety protocols and social distancing uh, measures. So some of those goals, uh, any business or uh, that had a goal that the travel industry, you know, you saw all that stuff uh, falling to the wayside now starting to recover. So think about, you know, what is relevant and makes sense to you, to your students or to your business. And then finally, time bound. Anyone can set goals, but if it lacks realistic timing, chances are you're not going to succeed. Uh, provide a target date for deliverables is imperative. So if I wanna speak fluent Italian, in three weeks, I am probably setting myself up for failure. Ask specific questions about the goal deadline and what can be accomplished within that time period. If the goal will take three months to complete, it's useful to define what should be achievable halfway through the process. And then providing time constraints, realistic time constraints, also creates a sense of urgency. Okay, so now I'm going to move us along and we're going to talk about some different strategies uh, to help establish what those goals might look like and how to reach them. Um, the first recommendation that I find super successful is to actually record goals in a journal at the beginning of the year with students. Now, this might sound a, sound a little elementary, but really, truly, the students enjoy expressing themselves. And this is one way to really set that foundation of the importance of writing down a goal. Now, for me as an adult, I'll be honest, if it's not written down, it's probably not going to happen because life happens. And I simply just, I just forget <laughs> what I was working towards. Things happen. Life might get in the way. Um, at the beginning of the year, I also find this is just a great opportunity for me to learn about my students, their interests, their desires whether it's academic, maybe they're involved in some sports or they are, they are a sports fan, um, they might have different hobbies, but these are a, just a great way to open their thought process to something that they might want to achieve and what something they're going to be interested and want to achieve. Um, you might find that you have some students ready to throw down five or 10 things that they want to work on and others struggle to come up with one. I find that it's just important to encourage coming up with at least one, but no more than three. That way it's manageable. Um, I also like to let students engage in this. One, it does help a student who might be struggling, but two, they do get to know their peers a lot better. And it really kind of creates an environment for accountability and motivation. Uh, Mid-year goal setting, I like to do data chats with my students, so I actually use their academic information of where they, where they are and have that conversation. It's just a casual conversation of where they want to be, where, and, and I can encourage them of sometimes kids, they just really hold themselves back. And Dr. Rosa mentioned this, oh, it might be too big. Well, you know what? They do need that encouragement for the goal setting. Um, I create a template. So something that would work with your classroom, with your students and whatever data it is that you might use, create a template. So it's very easy to follow. And it's very specific to be able to get the time for that. So we'll move on to um, the time. So yes, I'm a teacher. Time can be the enemy, um, but if students finish early with something, they have that journal, they can take it out, they can use it. Um, ask them open-ended questions. You know, when you're getting started, you might ask what is something you'd like to achieve, but don't, you, whether you just been afraid to try maybe. Um, if goals have already been established and there's extra time, they finish their work, have a prompt on the board already. You know, what have you done this week to work towards your goal? When you're looking at shaping those goals, we really want to make sure um, that our students are in, they're, that they're challenging themselves. But we want to make sure it's realistic. And I know Dr. Rosa talked about that. If it's too big, 
they're going to be afraid of failure. So we want to make sure that it is that realistic piece. Um, working around their disability, we really want to facilitate a goal setting opportunity that plays towards our students' strengths and understands um, any weakness. And that, that could be done in, a, in an activity. You could lead up to setting that goal and ask, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And the students can really kind of come to, to terms with what those are. Um, teach and model perseverance. Yes, model, model, model. You know, share stories about what goals maybe you achieved, um, how that made you feel, other goals that maybe you missed the mark. You know, I mean, that happens, but then share how you overcame it or what recognize what might have held you back. Um, truly, we are the ones that are going to help our students find that inner hero and inspire them to work towards their dreams. <clears throat> um, encourage student participation. Now, I love facilitating just an open dialogue for my students to share with each other. Um, for me, it's just so much fun. They're so creative. And when they really get into it, that excitement that comes with learning is it, that, they, that alone is a motivator. Um, we, and we do want them to think long-term first. You know, maybe someone throws out, I want to make the varsity football team. Okay, well, that's a great goal. But then what are some more smaller achievable goals that we can do this year that can lead up to that long-term goal. And when we're looking at tracking progress, um, you know, Dr. Rosa had mentioned going back to review goals. Well, you know what? If it's written down in a journal, they're gonna have something to go back to. Um, providing students with feedback. Now, this can be from you as the teacher, of course. You know, we're great facilitators with that. But if you actually take the time to schedule in some small group or some paired work, the students' peers can also share that feedback and that encouragement to their peers. And believe it or not, students can find that their peers can be a great support system for each other. And that's really what we're trying to build in our classroom and motivating our students to reach these goals. <clears throat> um, okay, we'll go to the next one. So when we're looking at handling setbacks, or failures, um, this is where that modeling, modeling what it looks like to learn from not hitting the target goal. Um, this is where having students work together to build a team of support for each other is just a great way for them to manage those setbacks. You know, it might be one thing to fail at something um, and you have a group of friends that have, are encouraging to you. They're not judging the failure because they, you know, they know what we've worked towards. They know the, where we've gone with working towards a goal versus failing in front of a whole bunch of peers that don't really know you. So we actually have the ability to create a classroom that supports our students to get back up, try again, create the reflection piece, and be able to just really persevere them through um, setting and achieving their goals. Uh, praise, that's one of those extrinsic rewards that, that we'll be talking about in a few minutes. You know, praising the specifics to what a student is doing um, and how they're doing it, recognizing that. Uh, linking schoolwork to the goals. So this, um, uh, something that I like to do is, um, for example, the student that's going to be on the football team, well, guess what? They're going to need to be able to keep their grades up to be able to play. So as the teacher, I'm going to be able to help them link and come up with ways that their schoolwork can be kind of tied in to the few goals to reach that long-term goal. Um, that open-ended question, you know, how did you do it? Make sure that the, the open-ended questions are going to guide them to really think broader about what they're doing. Um, and be specific with the praise. You know, a sample here, great job. You've achieved, achieved your best score on a science test all year. How did they do it? By participating more in small groups and completing all your homework. If you're so specific and you recognize the work and the effort that went into reaching that goal, 
they're going to smile and shake their head and say, yep, I did it. (laughs) And that's what we want. We want them to have that feeling of enjoyment um, of reaching and working towards their goals. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our goal checklist. Is it specific? Does it answer the who, the what, the when, the where, or the why? Is it too broad? Is it too narrow? Um, Is it going to be measurable? Is there a way really to identify when the goal has been reached? Can they measure whether or not they're making progress? Because if not, that's where we need to really kind of help facilitate um, the goal writing process. Is it relevant? You know, is this short-term goal really going to move our student to reaching their long-term dreams or desires? Is it attainable? You know, will the student be able to reach this goal with the current skills and abilities with what they have, what they're working with? Um, Will they really be inspired to work towards this goal? But also, is it challenging enough? You know, if the student is already on the varsity football team this year, is it really worth setting a goal to make the team next year? Maybe not. You know, get them to think a bit outside the box, but make sure that they reflect on the skills that they have or that they may need. You know, learning a new skill could create another opportunity to set a goal. Um, Is this really something that the student wants to work towards? Is it something that you can actually help them with? Um, Is there a timeline? You know, is it going to be before the end of the nine weeks? Is it going to be before the holiday break? By next school year? You know, when does the student want to reach this goal? And then truly, is it a goal that they can reach by then. Those are some of the things that we need to think about when we're facilitating goal setting with our students. Um, And then help them envision the completed goal. What will it look like? You know, maybe it's a certain grade in a a particular class. Help them envision that that finish line and what it's going to look like. Okay, so time to set a goal. So thinking Personally, um, for the viewers here, if you're looking at a career, you know, maybe there's something in your career that you want to attain, whether it's an advancement, um, maybe it's some kind of recognition that you're looking towards. Um, When you're looking at financial, like a financial goal, how much do you want to earn? You know, is it is an advancement in a career going to help you with a financial goal? Um, Education. Is there something that education-wise that you could acquire that's going to help you reach that financial and career goal? Um, The family, you know, do you want to be a parent? Are you a parent? Are you wanting to change maybe your parenting skills? You know, is there a goal that's going to be related to your family, your extended family? Um, artistic, you know, the kids love art, art, (laughs) being artistic is a, a, you know, I know my own daughter, she would love to be a singer and we have to sit down and look at, okay, what do we have to do to get you there? You have to do voice lessons. There's things that there's a lot of work that goes into some of these goals. Um, attitude mindset is so big in my classroom. You know, the mindset is going to take you further um, than anything. And so sometimes we might have to look at, maybe I need a goal for my attitude, (laughs) um, physical, you know, are there athletic goals, something that you want to achieve that has to do with your health? Maybe you are wanting to improve an area of your health. You know, what steps are going to get you there? Maybe there's certain things, you know, that we like to do in life. You know, my kids had a goal. They wanted to go to a theme park this summer. I'm like, okay, well, let's look at the, let's look at the whole picture. We're looking at the finances. We're looking at the schedule, you know, and there's things that you have to do to set that goal and the steps to get you there. Um, Maybe it's public service. Maybe you'd like to do something with the Humane Society, or maybe you have to learn how to take care of an animal to be able to do that first. So what we're looking at is, Let's look at setting a goal in an area of our life, whether it's personal, whether it's financial, I'm sorry, professional. um, And I guess it would be financial, professional sometimes leads us there. But let's take a look at what those goals that we might have, personal or professional, and how we can set that goal up. So here's a student goal that it's just an example. It's very specific 
it's measurable you know whether or not the, it was attained and you know the uh, the time frame so given 100 one digit by one digit multiplication problems using numbers 1 through 12 on a sheet i will be able to answer all of them accurately within 4 minutes by winter break so looking at a goal like that in that nature well, you know what? Okay, let's break it down. Let's look at how many weeks we have to winter break. We already know our ones, twos, threes, maybe fours. So what else do we have to learn? Okay, so now we need to do our fives through twelves. Well, let's break it up. If we know, uh, you know, however many we have to learn in however many weeks, we can break that up into more manageable steps to get there. Okay, so now we're looking at the motivation piece. So extrinsic motivation um, comes from the outside. So we're looking at praise, fame, money, and okay, fame and money, sure, those are great incentives. But in the classroom, I find with relationships that I build with my students that specific praise works. They want to see and hear how proud I am of them. But this also helps them with managing their setbacks because they know I'm gonna be there to support them all the way to the end. Family and friends, you know, this is when a student engagement, when they're engaging with each other, because you're creating a network of extrinsic motivation for students to keep working towards that goal. Uh, workout partner, well, and a trainer, if you've ever had a workout partner or a personal trainer, not only does this provide motivation, but it does provide accountability. Um, a competition or a program, you know, who wouldn't want that recognition of winning or holding the trophy, so to speak. Uh, medical, I think of this more like health, you know, are there goals that can help you better manage your health? Maybe it's related to stress. We do experience a lot of that in the field of education. Would setting a goal to walk every night help you reach a goal related to your health or, or eliminating stress? Um, paycheck, yes. Money could be the key to reaching a goal related to our careers. <laughs> Um, so intrinsic motivation, um, this, is, this one isn't as, as easy as those uh, extrinsic motivators, but this is what we want to build in our students so they enjoy working towards a goal. You know, motivating factors are essentially the why to what we do. So when students are able to tap into those intrinsic motivation, it's even more likely that they're going to work harder to reach those goals. So we can ask those open-ended questions, you know, how would your life be different or what might you be able to do then that you can't do now, you know, help them really envision what it's going to feel like to reach that goal. And I just like to model, to model that enthusiasm. You walk into a classroom with me, it looks like a party of excitement and, you know, that the students feel and they learn from that feeling of enjoyment and you can pull that into reaching goals <clears throat> okay so dr rosa walked us through uh making a smart goal so we're going to talk a little bit about how to make it a smarter goal so when you create your goal you've got your specifics you've got it's measurable it's achievable it's relevant and it's time bound but this is where I'm going to go back to writing in a journal because you are able to go back and evaluate and readjust and make that reflection even at the end of how um, you might have done it and how you might need to do it differently next time. Um, so we're going to add the ER to our SMART goal. <clears throat> So we're going to start with smarter goal evaluation. And what we're looking at is, is the task that we've decided on moving us towards what we want? Okay, sounds pretty simple. And if we say no, now we need to look at why. What is it that I've been doing? Okay, maybe I need to, I've, my goal is to do my multiplication facts um, by the holiday break. Well, I'm halfway through and I've realized I've been studying my multiplication facts in front of the TV. Okay, well, what can I do differently? I need to turn the TV off. <laughs> so we really need to take that evaluation and say, what can I do differently after I've evaluated whether or not I'm making progress towards my goal? What is working well? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm making tremendous progress. 
can I do more of it? Now that has to be done carefully because too much of a good thing can sometimes backfire. Um, as the, the teacher, when we look at doing little mini evaluations, we need to really kind of look at what the goals are and decide, okay, this, might, this goal might be, we're working towards the holiday break. So maybe we only need to evaluate the progress weekly. While this student might have a really short-term goal and they might need to, to monitor or evaluate that progress daily. So this is a conversation that will need to happen with the group of students to decide how often do I really need to make the little mini evaluations to make sure that I hit the target with my goal. And it really does help them stay focused. Um, sticking to that timeline is super important. And then the final evaluation helps them realize, okay, I'm going to be able to learn from any mistakes that I made, and I'm going to be able to do this even better next time. So that's the E part. So now we're going to look at the R to readjust. Now, this has to do with mindset. I said mindset, mindset. I could say it over and again. Having the ability to really make it, to accept a change to the approach. We're not gonna throw the goal away. Dr. Rosa just walked us through making an amazing SMART goal. And if we took the time to do that, we don't wanna get rid of the goal, but we might have to change the approach. You know, if you followed what Dr. Rosa taught us and we develop it well, and we're doing our regular evaluations, maybe we don't have to make any readjustments. But with every good goal and every situation, things are not always gonna be perfect. And we really have to model this to our students. Um, before the presentation, I was talking about plan A, plan B, plan C, and you know what? It's okay. And if you model that, your students are gonna go along with it and they're gonna learn that it's okay. Things are not always gonna be perfect and I might have to change my approach and I will be able to help my students create that open mind to making any changes if they're any changes that might be necessary. Um, okay, so goals may not 100% 100 100 succeed. And that's, that's okay too. Um, we will learn from it, but let's look at why. So bad goal definition. So that might mean you didn't have something specific enough. Um, failure to choose the right goal. You know what? We have different priorities at different times in our life. And you know what? A, a one goal might not work in the life right now, but it might work after the holiday break. Um, not important enough. It really truly has to align with your values um, of what's important to you, what might be important to you today. And that's why goals change. It might not be important um, in a year from now and vice versa. Um, leave it to chance. This is something I cannot leave it to chance for me personally. It has to be written down. It has to be top of mind because if I leave it to chance, it's not gonna happen. Um, if you don't share your goals, and this is for me, super important in the classroom, my students are going to be their biggest fans for each other. Now, I don't know, might be a close call. I'm probably their biggest fan. But when it comes to engaging the students together, they are going to learn about each other and they're going to want to encourage their peers to succeed. And just to be part of that is motivating for me enough as their teacher to get them to that point. So I want them to share their goals. Um, don't set milestones. Setting the milestones is just as important as how you set up the goal. Because if you don't address the milestones to get there, it's not gonna happen. Um, don't factor in the work. And this is super important because all goals have work to get there. And the students have to understand, they're gonna have to put the work in to have the enjoyment of reaching that goal and to make sure um, they're not unrealistic. We need to, to facilitate that a little bit. <laughs> okay, so some final tips. Write your goals down. I love having my students use a journal. It's something that they have right then, right there. They keep it at their desk. They can write it down. We can go back and we can reflect on it. Um, visualize it. For me, as their teacher, I am so descriptive with my enthusiasm and my words so they can visualize it or watch me visualize the goals that I'm setting. And then they learn how to do that. Um, don't be afraid to reevaluate your goals. 
set, teach them. It's important. Reevaluate, readjust. To get there, you have to be able to teach them to do that. Um, and don't let your goals control you. You are the one setting the pace. You are the one getting there. Um, find balance. Oh, life is so busy. Even the students, they're so busy. We're all so busy. We have to make sure it's a fair balance for everyone. Um, positive language, positive language, modeling that, having that as an expectation in the classroom is encouraging. It's, in, it's motivating. Um, teaching them to accept change. That's that mindset. It's okay. We're going to change. We're going to move on. We're going to do it better. Um, we're going to learn from our mistakes. Um, be smart with the goals. Life happens. We have to just manage and adjust. Um, these should be your goals that reflect your values and reward yourself along the way. Teach the students, you know, we can reward ourselves along the way, even if we haven't met it yet. Even if we miss the mark, we're going to reward ourselves for working hard to get there and then just enjoy that moment. So I just wanted to add, um, when in terms of sharing goals, um, so you, everyone has to do what's best for them. So there are certain goals um, that I share out loud, but there are goals that I, I keep to myself because the pressure is just too much. For example, when I was in high school, I was a lead in the play. I did not tell any of my family members until they showed up at the at the uh, theater and saw that I was the lead. And I'm glad I didn't because I had lost my voice that day. Uh, so it didn't matter to my family because I was a state, they thought I was a stage manager. So there really was not any pressure. Uh, but then when they realized that, oh, wow, he's the lead. Um, and also I did the same thing with my dissertation. I did not tell a single person that I, um, well, I moved to Florida. So all of my friends from New Jersey, no one knew, my family didn't know that I was achieving my dissertation because it was just too much pressure for me. Uh, so what did I do? I sent my mother a link the day of graduation. I said, hey, I'm hosting the graduation. She was like, okay. And then she clicked on the link and she saw that uh, I was walking across the stage. Uh, and I have numerous examples of that in my life. But so that's another, everything we're telling you, you really need to know about yourself and see what's best for you. Uh, so you need to know whether you're motivated by sharing goals or by sometimes keeping them to yourself, but it all depends on you. But I think we wanted to leave you with this thought, um, which pertains to goal setting and, and just in general, many things, you know, every second is unique and holds the potential to be everything and nothing at the same time. The fact that you are one thing at this second does not mean you have to be consistent in the next second. Every second, you get the chance to reinvent yourself. So it's about looking at opportunity and taking advantage of that opportunity and using that goal setting to give you that step forward to be, take advantage of that opportunity. So we thank you very much. Here are some um, webs, uh, Florida Department of Education and then some specific links to some documents uh, in the Florida Department of Education and in CPOMS. If you wanna do these lessons for students, they do have already pre-existing goal setting lessons, some of them using the SMART strategy. So by all means, you do not have to start from scratch. And here are some of the references we also use. Uh, you could take a picture or just do the printout uh, of the slides. And of course, we're available if you have any uh, extra questions or, or, or need anything. And my email is there and then you can reach out to me and then I will loop in uh, Laura as well uh, if you have any additional questions. But, but generally speaking, thank you very much.